today on part 10 of our Grand Cherokee project series. We work on reinforcing and updating our roof rack as we remove all of our accessory mounts and prepare to mount our brand new rooftop tent. If you've ever wondered about how we built or mounted our custom roof rack, this one's for you. Back in 2014, I purchased my first Jeep ever, which is this, a 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. With the big 5.2 liter V8 engine and low miles, this completely stocked ZJ was full of potential. Since then, well, we've done a few upgrades and modifications. Past projects include a 3.5 inch lift, transfer case swap, custom roof rack, lights, skid plates, and so much more. We've transformed this stock ZJ into a capable off-road rig and reliable daily driver that's taken us all across Arizona. Today, we continue the project. All right, so first thing is first. Yes, we did get a rooftop tent, and yes, we will be taking it out very soon and explaining everything about it and why we ended up getting it, but we first need to do some important upgrades to our current roof rack system in order to strengthen it up even further and hold the much heavier load of our new tent. So this video will be about all of that prep work and our next video coming out in a couple weeks will be more about the tent on our first trip taking it out. So with that out of the way, let's get started on the project. So for the last three years, this has been the setup for our roof rack. And up until the last few months before we installed the new rear bumper, the rack also held a spare tire, high lift jack, CB antenna, and lights. The rack was designed to be very low profile and light, while giving us room to mount and or temporarily store some small loads while out on trips. The rack was built using square tubing around the perimeter. Slightly thinner square tubing made up the inside supports, and we used a variety of miscellaneous metal pieces to make all of the accessory mounts. The rack was mounted to the Jeep using some custom made metal brackets that bolted to the roof rack on all four corners and then attached down through the roof using the existing holes for the roof rails. This required using a specialized bolt that we'll be talking about a little bit later, but it was surprisingly sturdy and stable since it was bolted directly to the roof of the Jeep. Now the rack has held up pretty good over the last three years of use with minimal downsides or fixes needed. Some of the metal has gotten scratched and began to form some rust from being out in the elements. Our main concern, besides fixing all that, was creating additional mounting points and rewelding some of the weaker, older welds to make it even stronger. One of the welds on the driver's side had actually broken over time. During this process, we would also need to remove all of the old hardware on the roof, like I previously mentioned to hold on the jack and the tire, and all of the other stuff we used to have up there. Now, the Grand Cherokee has a slightly curved roof, and while our rack did sit flat and level, not having mounts in the center portion did cause a slight issue when we first put on the rack back in 2015. We found that under certain vehicle and rack loads, the rack would bounce or slightly raise in the center when going over certain bumps. While this wasn't a huge concern and was easily fixed with some foam and tape to handle some of those lighter loads, we wanted to add additional mounting points to ensure that the rack would not budge, period, under the much heavier load of the tent. After taking the roof rack off of the Jeep, we set to work grinding down some of those rusty spots and some of the older welds on the rack. At this point, we also removed some of those old accessory mounts in the center of the rack by cutting them off with a grinder wheel. This was a fairly quick and easy process. After that was done, it was time to re-weld the broken inner support and strengthen some of those older welds with some new and better welding. After cleaning up the welds a bit and some of the other spots that we had grinded off, we let the rack sit and cool down before repainting it completely. We then spent some time making sure all of the bare metal and the welds were well coated with flat black paint. After that was dry, we gave the rack a good coat with some clear coat in order to help try and protect it from any future wear and tear or weather damage. 
While letting the rack dry, we set to work on the other part of this project, which was preparing the tent to mount up to the rack. This would require a bit of modification as well. It just so happened that our roof rack and the base of our tent were nearly completely identical in size, which was really convenient. Now the rails that came with the tent normally mount directly to the base, and when used with the brackets, those mount up to the crossbars on a vehicle's roof or a vehicle bed or wherever you're going to put it. However, we don't have crossbars on our Jeep. We have a rack that will work just fine for the tent, but because the rack is so low profile that when mounted normally, or like it would be on any other normal vehicle, we wouldn't be able to get our hands in there in order to tighten down the bolts that would hold the tent on. This is one of the few downsides of our rack was that it was so low profile that it would require a creative solution. Our solution was to raise up the tent a few inches off of those tent rails that we had just talked about in order to provide some space between the base of the tent and the top of the rack. By giving us just enough space, this would allow us to get our hands in there easily to tighten down those brackets and take the tent on and off very easily. In order to do this, we used a 2x4 cut to the right width and length to perfectly match those aluminum rails, which we also had to trim down to get the right length for our vehicle. After a busy morning of work, we took a quick break for some lunch. After refueling, our first step was to paint the new wood spacers we had just made for the tent. We gave them a quick coat of black paint in order to help protect those from the elements as well. We let those sit and dry as we moved back over to the roof rack portion of the project. The next step was to design and install an additional four supports that would be connecting the rack to the roof of the Jeep. This combined with the other four corner mounts would provide a total of eight supports holding our rack on, which should be more than enough to carry the load we had. To do this, we would be using several small pieces of metal, all welded together. The way we designed it was that it'd be sort of a step configuration where the top portion would be bolted directly to the rack, while the lower portion would have a hole and a bolt going down into the existing roof rail bolts. The inner lip of our new bracket would hug the inside of the roof rail and help to prevent any side to side movement while we were driving. As far as bolting it to the roof, we would be using the same bolt we had in the past to help secure the corner mounts, which are longer and stronger than those factory roof rail bolts. The bolt we found to do this job was a hex cap M6-1 by 50 millimeter. And those can be found at any local hardware store or even ordered online. We found that those match up perfectly with the thread that the roof rail comes from the factory with. So it'd be going in actually a little bit deeper than the roof rail bolts in order to secure it tightly to the roof. We set to work cutting the metal strips to the right length, welding them together, and making sure they were all the same. At this point, the roof rack was now dry, so we decided to mount it back up using those prior four corner bolts that held it on for the last three years. Because they were still attached to the roof rails, it was real simple to bolt the roof rack right back up. We would be mounting the new additional bracket soon, with the roof rack now back in place. But we still needed to paint those new brackets and let them have time to dry before attempting any of that. In the meantime, it was time to move back over to the tent and get that ready to mount. Now that our new wooden spacers were now ready, and the aluminum rails were cut, it was time to start assembling the tent rails. So real quick, a little more about this tent. It is a CVT Mount Shasta Standard. It is a two-person tent, and of course we'll be going into tons more detail when we take it out on future trips. Now the tent comes with a variety of mounting hardware and instructions. However, since we were adding a non-factory part, so to speak, that is the wooden spacer, we would need to use some longer bolts in order to hold everything together. The bolts go down through the top of the tent floor and then come out the bottom where they would go through our wood spacer and then into the aluminum rails. These are held on with a nut that is secured inside of the rail itself. 
We tightened things up and tested the strength. It seemed like everything was nice and firmly mounted, so our addition of a couple of inches of wood would have no adverse effects. With the tent now ready to mount up to the rack, we jumped back to the roof rack to finalize those new mounts that we were adding. Installing our new custom made brackets was an easy process. We fitted them up to the rack near the center of the roof rails where we wanted to put them. We first drilled out a hole on the top lip in order to provide a place to bolt directly to the rack. After that was done, we then drilled the lower hole into the roof rail and installed the bolt to secure it in place. We ended up needing to slightly offset the bolts, that way they could both be securely tightened without hitting each other. Once everything was tightened down, the roof rack was firmly in place. No part of the rack was able to move anymore, there was no bouncing, and it was seriously mounted into the roof utilizing our eight custom mounts. Side to side movement is prevented due to the metal lips we would built to hold the rack inside of the rails and front to back movement was prevented due to the bolts going down deep past the rails and into the roof itself. Now this setup may look a little bit different, may look a little bit unique, but making this rack and the tent mounting solution is as custom as it gets. Chances are there probably isn't another Grand Cherokee with a roof rack and tent mounted like this. Now that the rack was 100% done, it was time to finish the final assembly of the tent and put it up for a test fit. We put the ladder on the top part of the tent base and quickly installed it using a few bolts and spacers. The ladder would be adjusted based on the height of the vehicle later, but this is what is used to help open and close the tent and help to hold the tent up after it is deployed. So the ladder is really critical that you get at the right angle and at the right length later on. After this step, it was time. Time to lift this heavy thing up and onto the roof rack to bolt down to the rack. After awkwardly getting the tent onto the Jeep, we carefully positioned it and used the provided mounts to secure it to the Jeep. We walked around and admired our hard day's work. After having the roof rack empty for the last few months, the tent looked so big and bulky on top of the Jeep. During transit, however, a travel cover would go on in order to help keep everything dry and strapped down as much as possible. For now, there was just one thing left to do, and that was to open it up and see how it looked. With an audience now formed and anxiously awaiting, we unstrapped the tent, pulled down the ladder, and opened up the tent for the first time ever, right in our driveway. It looked incredible. While we wouldn't fully deploy all of the windows and covers until our first trip out, this quick opening allowed us to look inside the tent, figure out how some of the things worked on it, and make sure that our roof rack would be able to handle the tent opening and closing, and just the weight in general. It looked awesome. Going forward, having the flexibility to take the tent on and off the roof rack would prove incredibly helpful and also get easier with time. So taking the tent on and off the Jeep as well as opening is one of those things where on the first try, it's gonna take quite a while to figure out, but we'll get progressively faster as we get a system in place and get more experienced. We also found that trimming a little bit of the existing factory roof rails would be helpful in order to help get the mounting brackets for the tent on and off each time. And that's it for part 10 of our ZJ project series. This was all about the roof rack, getting it ready, getting it sturdy, and getting it ready for many future camping trips with our new tent. Hopefully you found this video useful to see how we originally built the rack and then customized it and reinforced it for mounting the tent from complete scratch. Going forward, I can't wait to start getting out some more and camping along the way. Our next video, which will come out in two weeks from the posting of this project video, will be a test run out to Saddle Mountain where we will dive into the tent, open it up, see how it holds up in the desert, and of course talk a little bit more about it than we could in this video. So we're excited to share that with you, excited to share many more adventures and projects 
as we move forward. As always, you can catch up with our Grand Cherokee project here on YouTube, or you can head over to our newly redesigned website and see more pictures and write-ups of nearly every step of our Grand Cherokee build. The project is never done though, and we will have future ZJ modifications in the coming months. Thanks for watching this one, and we are excited to get started on this new chapter of adventuring. We'll see you on the next one.